In this video, we'll look at ways to improve the predictions we made with Euler's method. In previous videos, we imagined a disease called the one-legged R syndrome, and some information about how it acted and how many susceptible, infected, and removed individuals there were when we started collecting data. We built a model of differential equations and used this to create a table. As we were creating the table, we used the central relationship that the amount of change in the number of susceptible individuals could be approximated by multiplying the rate at which the number was changing by the amount of change in time. In our examples, we were using a delta t of one day. And this was just an approximation because when we did this, we were assuming that the rate, s prime, is constant for the entire day. But we weren't required to use a delta t of one day. So a way to improve the accuracy of our predictions is to use shorter time intervals. Let's look at how to do that. We'll make a second table for our work. And let's try using time intervals of a half day. So I'll make some space in our table, and then add in the time values for a half day and one and a half days. Let's think about what s prime at time zero is telling us. This negative 12 means at zero days since we started collecting data, the number of susceptible individuals is changing at a rate of negative 12 people per day. So if we think about this situation, if S changes at a rate of negative 12 people per day for just a half day, then there should be six fewer susceptible individuals at the end of the half day. And if we think about this in terms of our central relationship, S prime is negative 12, and delta T is a half day, so delta S is negative 6. And if we subtract 6 from 6,000, we'll get 5,994 individuals. Let's think about the values for the removed group. Let's think about what R prime at time 0 is telling us. This 3.33 means at 0 days since we started collecting data, the number of removed individuals is changing at a rate of 3.33 people per day. So if we think about this situation, if R changes at a rate of 3.33 people per day for just a half a day, then there should be half of a 3.33, that is 1.67, more removed individuals at the end of the half day. And if we think about this in terms of our central relationship, R prime is 3.33, and delta T is a half day, so delta R is 1.67. And if we add 1.67 to 5, we'll get 6.67 individuals. Now, I'm going to use a spreadsheet to automatically compute the rest of the values in this table. If we compare the two predictions for the number of susceptible individuals, we can see that the prediction we made using half-day intervals was different than with the one-day intervals. Comparing the number of infected individuals shows different predictions, as does comparing the predictions for the number of removed individuals. Why is this happening? Let's take a closer look at the comparison between the predictions for the numbers of susceptible individuals. Here is a table that shows the predicted values for the number of susceptible individuals using one-day intervals, in orange, and half-day intervals, in blue. I'll make a graph that shows these values. In the graph, we can see that for some numbers of days, the predictions made using the one-day intervals are larger, and for other numbers of days, the predictions using the half-day intervals are larger. Why might this be happening? Here is a table of values for S prime, the rate at which the number of susceptible individuals is changing. If we look at the values for the predictions using one-day time intervals, we can see that these rates are always decreasing. And the same is true of the rates using the half-day time intervals. When we're using the half-day intervals, we're updating these rates more frequently, so the resulting predictions for the number of susceptible individuals is more accurate. And we can imagine using even smaller time intervals. For example, I'll add in predictions made using time intervals of a tenth of a day in green. This graph shows that when we use smaller time intervals, we get different predictions. And it turns out that when we use shorter time intervals, we get more accurate predictions. This is because, in our central relation, 
we were assuming that the rate was constant for the entire time interval. We know that the rate was always changing, so when we use shorter intervals, our assumption of a constant rate is less of a bad assumption.